Thank you very much. I'm going to be nasty. I'm going to start to ask you questions. You have been giving this answering device. Unfortunately, it was not enough for everyone, but those who have it. The first question is, imagine out of 10 children in the world, how many get measles vaccines? I'll tell you why I ask this question. If you're going to provide any sort of health service in the country, the most cost-effective, perhaps most important, is to get the young kids vaccinated. It's so effective. And measles vaccine is a quite advanced product, which has to be in a cold chain. So how many of the children in the world get it? Imagine out of 10, how many get it? This means this is 10%, this is 50%, this is 100%. I'll give you a hint, it's not 100%. How many? Press one to nine. Now this is not touch screen. I know you are so soft, you do like this on touch screen. This you have to press really hard. And if you change your mind, you can press once more. Now, in the world as a whole, imagine girls which are between 7 to 13 years old who should go to primary school. It's called primary school, the first five years of school. Eh? How many out of 10 girls is enrolled in school? in the world as a whole? Huh? Is it one that is 10%? Is it 50%? Once more, I can tell you it's not 100%. One to nine. Please choose what you think. Now, straightforward, in the homes, what, how many people out of 10 have electricity at home? A switch they can put on a light. How many out of 10 in the world? You see, these are not like, like this small quiz question. This is major, get, if you get an idea on how people live in this world. Out of 10, how many have electricity? Now, this is about number of people. I'm talking a lot about population and population change. When I was born, I was born in 1948, almost here, there was less than 1 billion children in the world, 800 million children. And then during my lifetime, the number of children in the world has increased and increased and increased. And at the year 2000, the number hit 2 billion. Now, the best demographers, those who know how to count people in the world, at the United Nations Population Division, they have made an estimate, they call it a projection, what will happen during this century. If things continue to change in the way they are doing, how many children can we expect by the end of this century? One of these lines is the expert's line. The other two I made up. They are pure fantasy. And the experts are fairly in agreement what will happen. Do the experts say we have to expect an increase, continuous increase to hit about 4 billion by the end of this century? Or do they say, no, the increase will be slower. It will be about 3 billion. Or do they say, oh, no, the number of children have stopped increasing. There will be no more. It will stay the same, 2 billion throughout the century. A, B, or C. Now, this is about how long you live. That means how healthy you are. We call it life expectancy. It's when someone is newborn in the world or in the country, how long can they on average expect to live? if things remain more or less the same. That is, if the risk of dying at different ages remains the same. And I help you here also, in the most healthy country, Japan, people on average now would live 83 years. And the worst of countries, these are like the war-torn countries that had Ebola in West Africa, about 45 years. This is the worst, this is the best. What is the world as a whole on average? Is the world 50, 60, or 70? Of course, we don't know it perfectly. The uncertainty is like plus, minus two to three years. Huh? But the difference between my alternatives are so huge, so there's no, no, no doubt which one is the true value. What do you think it is? 50, 60, or 70? Now, this is about the part of the world that undoubtedly have the worst health problem. Sub-Saharan Africa, the countries in Africa south of the Sahara. 
we know quite well the child mortality there. Not because they register children who are born or die in hospital. It's because every three years in almost all countries there are done surveys. Three to six thousand women are interviewed calmly by careful interviewers about what happened in their life the last five years. How many kids were born, how many died. So from that, we know this fact relatively well. I would say surprisingly well. And we know that in 1990, it was about 18%. And then we know what have happened. One of these lines is the true lines, the other two are made up. So is the, the true fact what happened is that in this part of the world, the child mortality increased, remained the same, or dropped to half? A, B, or C. Now it's about resources, we would say money. Huh? But it's about the least amount of money you can have. You live in extreme poverty. And extreme poverty have a quite a clear definition. It's not having enough food to eat. If you read the Bible, you find it in Matthew 6, 11. Matthew 6, 11. Our daily bread give us today. That means extreme poverty is not having enough food. Huh? And that means you can't work as you would like to do, you can't play as you would like to do. What about the percentage of people living in extreme poverty <coughs> the last 20 years? Has it doubled, remained the same, or fall, fell to half? It's like big alternative. Did it increase, remain the same, or drop to half? A, B, or C? Okay. Now I go back here. We call this factfulness in Gapminder. You know, factfulness is a new attitude.